Hi everyone, we're back at New York Toy Fair and we're here with Summer from NECA. She's going to take us through their Toy Fair booth. Hi, nice to meet everyone out there watching along with this. Uh, I'm Summer, I've been with NECA for about 10 years and I'm super excited to show you our Toy Fair offerings. Awesome, let's go. Well, TMNT is a big part of our line and you'll see here that we have several different distinct sections set up for the different lines for the original Mirage comics, the movies, uh, the Last Ronin comic book series, um, and we've also got a little bit of Usagi Yojimbo mixed in here as well. Uh, not only were, will we be doing crossover items for Usagi, where you know he's actually entered the TMNT universe, but we do plan on going more into the Usagi comics themselves. Awesome. So tell us a little bit about this uh, gentleman here in a green sweater that we're seeing for the first time. I see that you have spotted Kirby. Um, so this is something that we're very happy to be able to show fans, and we've been working on it for a really long time. Uh, this involved, obviously, a lot of behind-the-scenes clearances, um, even though it's a tribute character and not you know, really intended to be a lifelike depiction of it. We did want to make sure that all the parties involved were, were okay with us doing this. So once we had that cleared, we were finally able to show it. It's been a long time in the making, and I know this is kind of a deep cut, but one that a lot of fans have been waiting for. Awesome. All right. So moving, moving on. Mm -hmm. So moving on over here, you'll see a lot of new items uh, coming for the Last Ronin series. Uh, we'll have a variety of different characters. Um, we'll be doing them in their regular colorations as well as uh, classic colors. Um, we've got Casey coming. We've got various uh, Sinja ninjas, patrol bots, uh, versions of all of the brothers at various points in the comic books. You'll see Splinter. We have Karai, uh, who should be out at retail right about now. There's just a lot more to come for this line, uh, especially I know that some people will remember that we have teased from the Lost Years arc of the Last Ronin series, Grammy April, who will be coming with Baby Turtles. She wasn't quite ready to show for the show, but uh, that is definitely still in the future. And I love the uh, on the box art here, the, the panels, how they all connect. Yes, uh, at, the, at the beginning of the series, it might not have been obvious that that's the direction that we were going in, but as the line is built up, you can now see that we've been building a really fun, complex scene on the sides of the boxes. So from The Last Ronin into kind of the film verse and Universal Monsters uh, uh, subset of Turtles, tell us about what we're looking at here. Uh, well, one of our fantastic diorama backgrounds, we are now adding a new complementary piece to that. So you're looking at the Shredder Throne, which took a great deal of effort on the part of our sculptors uh, just to get as much reference material for this as possible so it could be really screen accurate. And they did a great job on that. Uh, that we're not sure exactly when it will be coming soon, but we've already heard a lot of people asking for direct sales for that, so that's definitely something we'll consider putting up first on the NECA store. We've also got a two-pack of Professor Jordan Perry coming. Some people may have uh, been able to take a sneak peek at this previously, but it's worth a second look. That's an exciting set to come. Uh, we're going to have uh, a kind of training Kino with a foot soldier two-pack coming out and just various more pieces for that, especially considering that next year is the 20th, an or the, sorry, the 40th anniversary. Um, we've got a lot of surprises that we'll be able to reveal very early in the year, and I think one of them in particular is gonna be one that a lot of people have been waiting for. Oh man, I hope that means what I think it means. <laughs> and then uh, moving down to uh, part three here, the, the, the samurai turtles are coming back out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we've uh, packed these in two packs for the mass market uh, with more limited accessory selection. And those will be coming to Walmart, I believe, later this year. Uh, you can see the packaging for the Jordan Perry two pack. 
which I do believe we're planning on putting up on the store also for an open pre-order, and the foot training Kino, too, for people who were not able to get the San Diego exclusive version. We have this different version coming. And we have two new monster turtles uh, here as well. Yes, this is a line that we love, especially myself, because I love the Universal Monsters line, particularly classic movies. Uh, so we have Raphael as the wolf man and Leonardo as the creature. So now that we've seen uh, two of the turtles get two different iterations of Universal Monsters, is there, are, are there, can we expect more in this line? Possibly, yes. Um, but there are so many characters in the Ninja Turtles universe that have some, you know, pretty obvious crossover potentials that, like, I think we're going to get to some more of the other characters first before revisiting any of the other, of the turtles again. Awesome. And from the movies uh, to the Toon universe, so tell us a little bit about what we're looking at here. Uh, so this is the Toon area. As you can see, we've got uh, the giant size Michelangelo, which we've just offered and should be out soon. We've also got a giant sized Krang, a 20 whole inches. It's going to make a very impressive display piece. Um, for people who have pre-ordered the uh, sewer layer diorama, we have that on display along with the punk turtles. Uh, two of them are inside the display and two of them are on top of it. And just, you know, in a, dis a display of like the various diorama possibilities for the line. Uh, we have crossover versions of Usagi out for first looks. Uh, we have uh, Leonardo and Donatello Samurai and Space Adventures that will be coming in a two pack. Uh, and also the Casey Jones business suit version with a split foot bot. Now, for the sewer layer, I know something that a lot of people have been asking about that top layer um, the, with the, the street printed on the top. Is, is It looks to be like a, a thick foam board, yeah? Yeah, it's, so it's a thick foam core, and I was actually uh, a little curious about that when it was first raised by uh, Trevor, who's the brand manager for this line. I think most people will know him already. Um, and so he sent me photographs of various barbells sitting on top of it in increasing weights. I asked him to leave them there for a number of weeks and then send me a picture afterwards. Uh, and he did, and I saw, I saw no change in it. So it can support a great deal of weight, uh, and it's actually what he uses for a lot of his own homemade constructions for other dioramas. Awesome. So the, the idea being that the, the other diorama will be able to sit on top of this and you can, mm -hmm. you can stack the two of them. Yes. And I see we're also seeing the packaging for the, uh, the turtle van. Yes. So this is a first look at the packaging for the turtle van. It's closed box packaging with some new illustrations on it. And so, you, I mean, once you see the pre-pro of the packaging, you know, you're, you're pretty close yeah. on production. So transitioning out of the turtles here and into uh, some Toonie terrors and getting into the horror stuff, uh, tell us about what we're seeing here. I see some, some new faces for the first time. Yeah, so we have a variety of new Toonies to show off. We have our Series 8 and 9s, which I think a lot of people have seen before. Um, and the Jigsaw Killer and Billy in the box set, which should be coming out on the market any day now. But we have some new reveals as well. We'll do a line of Toonies for uh, Wednesday. We'll be doing a line, uh, not a line of Toonies, but at least a Jessica from Murder, She Wrote. And we'll also be doing a line of action figures for Thanksgiving, which you can see the Toonie over here, but we'll also have an ultimate figure and a clothed figure uh, for that. Uh, we've also been doing a lot of work uh, on Pee-wee's Playhouse. Uh, we actually had been in um, development for a couple of years uh, directly with Paul Rubens uh, before his passing and it, you know, it's, it's really sad and unfortunate that he didn't make it to see a lot of this stuff come onto the market, but he was personally involved with the whole line. Uh, we, we didn't deal 
in meetings with his people. We dealt directly with him. Like he wanted to have hands on everything. So it was it was really unusual and fun uh, to be able to work on this stuff with him. So we'll have a line of toonies, um, head knockers, action figures, uh, and then other items from the other companies as well, like Kid Robot. Very cool. And and uh, moving down here, we have Elvira, who just celebrated, uh, I think, a 35th anniversary of, of her her kind of landmark film. Some new products for her. Yes. Uh, just in time for the holidays, we'll be coming out with the very scary Xmas themed Elvira. This is a really deluxe, awesome set. And as you can see, uh, it even comes in a slipcase package that makes it perfect for gift giving, whether that's to yourself or to someone else is entirely up to you. Uh, we have a deluxe Toonie Elvira set. We have the Red Fright and Boo clothed action figure. That's from over the summer for the 4th of July themed. Um, but her team is really great to work with and everyone loves Elvira. So we see a lot of stuff in the future for her. So from Toonies, let's move over here. We have some new uh, Ultimates on display and I'm trying not to be terribly distracted by all of the newness that I'm seeing. Yes, this is, a, we're standing right in front of my absolute favorite part of the tour. Um, everyone has been waiting for more looks at uh, our upcoming figures, specifically Krampus, but you're, you're starting down at the left end, so I will tell you about Vincent Price. Um, this is a figure that he 100% deserves. Vincent Price is awesome. Uh, this figure is going to come with interchangeable fronts uh, so that you can have him, of course, in the ascot <laughs> uh, and, and uh, different other looks uh, as well as the alternate heads. And I believe more accessories than are being shown, but this is still at the prototype phase. You also have a first look at the upcoming Ultimate John Carver from Thanksgiving, um, at the Ultimate Megan from Megan, and um, very close to my heart, we have just, well not just, but we're now finally able to announce that we signed a deal with Hammer Horror, and we have access to their amazing catalog of cult classics, but for any fan, there was only one movie that you could start with, Yep. and that's Christopher Lee's Horror of Dracula. Yeah, the, the Hammer films, when you, you know, when you guys started in on the, the Universal Horror I was really, really hoping that Hammer was in the works. I mean, that's my my personal favorite version of these, uh, mm -hmm. you know, these classic monsters, mm -hmm. and he looks fantastic. That ultra red blood, and you know, yes, just like the tempura paint red. Yep. It's uh, it's so like the Hammer films were what kind of sexed up the whole monster genre, and kind of brought it to a new generation. So they're. They're particularly famous for that, and there are some real goodies in there that we're excited to get to. And, and then, of course, here we go, Krampus. everyone has been waiting for the their first look at the Krampus line, and here it is. It is creepy and a little gross, and uh, hopefully everything that people were waiting for. Oh yeah, look at those those soulless eye holes. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. Uh, th these are still prototypes, so there will be obviously maybe a few changes, definitely lots more accessories, possibly more dark elf characters. Um, we have a number of things planned for the line, so just a first look at some of them. The timing for these is going to be Q4, so holiday next year. Perfect. And then coming down here, we're seeing uh, the, uh, the the new Predator, the latest Predator in the long line of Predator action figures you guys have produced. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so out right now is the Feral Predator from Prey. We will also have another version of the Feral Predator in a bear blood paint. Uh, that's going to be coming soon as well. And there are a number of other figures planned for the line that we can't show quite yet. Okay. But yeah, definitely rest assured there's a lot ahead for the Predator line, including the very often requested Where is My Wolf Predator? Awesome. <laughs> People will be happy to hear that. 
Yes, definitely they will. We are constantly getting asked about it on social, and it is coming. There's just a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes. And then jumping back to horror here, we have two two other uh, icons. Yes, well, Count Orlock from Nosferatu is kind of a silhouette and a look that's very familiar to any horror fan. Uh, this is a movie that is actually in the public domain right now. Um, so it's, it's a little surprising that there are not more figures of it, but uh, we like to think that ours is the most awesome. I'm not biased or anything. Nor should you be, right? <laughs> no, of course not. <laughs> uh, so that that is an exciting paint. This is the color version. We'll also do a black and white version of him. And he is, of course, standing next to the ultimate Professor Burke, a.k.a. Man in the Beaver Hat, yeah. from London After Midnight. Um, that's a silent 20s film that is has achieved, despite being kind of like critically panned at the time, uh, has achieved a sort of cult-like status because every single copy of it was lost yeah. in a warehouse fire. And what remains has just been pieced from a lot of publicity stills from the time and various other photography. Um, but this is definitely a look uh, in the line that like Lon Chaney was really famous for. You know, he always had this incredible ability to create these looks for characters that were just uniquely horrifying and disturbing. And eventually went on to inspire the uh, the famous hatbox ghost at uh, at, <laughs> at uh, the Haunted Mansion. So very cool to, to get this in a figure form. Yes, it is, it is. You can see uh, here he's wearing the, the faux vampire wings from the movie. Uh, those are removable, and you can see just a couple of the accessories that'll come with them. And then I think the other thing that's new here, uh, we have we have uh, Murphy from RoboCop. Yes, we've got a Peter Murphy here. Um, this he's confusingly being displayed in front of the RoboCop with chair <laughs> packaging. Uh, that looks like it got switched around earlier. But this Peter Murphy uh, will come with interchangeable heads and hands. And of course, this is all from the iconic scene where like, he just gets shot up and killed by gangsters and you know, ultimately becomes Robocop. So we've got all kinds of gory switch-ins for the arms and hands. And um, we will actually be doing a store event with this that will have a very special bundle in. Uh, I can't say more about that right now, but look for news on our social media in the coming weeks, and you'll hear more about something super awesome we have to offer. And before we leave this uh, this section here, we, we travel into video games real quick, right, with uh, some Assassin's Creed figures. Yes, uh, longtime fans of NECA will remember that we have previously released some Ezio figures uh, long in the past for Brotherhood and Revelations, and these are remastered versions of those. It's not a straight re-release. Uh, we've made tooling upgrades and paint upgrades uh, to celebrate the new game release, which I believe is happening on the 5th. All right, and let's continue on with horror here as we move down to the next case uh, into, see, into some familiar faces here. Yes, so you can get a better look at the Frankenstein in the chair that will be offered soon. Uh, and panning past that, you can see just a lot of our Universal Monsters, and in particular, the Remco Tribute line. Uh, every part of that line is a tribute to some of these toys that we had when we were kids, from the card packaging to the fonts we selected on the packaging. Uh, to even some of the particular wording we used and where we placed it. Like, it was not hard to find reference material for these because we didn't really have to go further than a couple of particular sculptors' homes. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I know I, I've spoken at length to uh, Chris Ramo about the, the packaging on here. It absolutely crushed the, you know, the, the redesign of it. I love the stand-up vinyl style capes on the figures too for, for Jack and for Phantom. Uh, yeah, th this is honestly, this is my favorite version of these Universal Monsters figures. I, I can't wait to, to add Drac and, and, uh, and Phantom to the shelf. Uh, yeah, we'll have the glow-in-the-dark version of the Phantom as a New York Comic-Con exclusive in about a week and a half. 
you'll be able to get that at our booth. Uh, and he's standing right next to the other New York Comic Con exclusive, uh, which is Ultimate Ghostface Takes Manhattan. Uh, that will also be available at our booth, and you can see him with some of his accessories there. But yeah, the capes are also one of my favorite things on the Remco Tribute figures. They're so old school, just like that awful tape cut out of one flat piece of material yep. that just was still somehow delightful. Awkwardly high collar. <laughs> yes, just <laughs> way too high collar to be, you know, useful. Starched, very high, highly starched. And b below uh, Ghostface here, we have our first look at the, the Thing Creature in package. Yes, so you can see the, the very uh, artistic packaging for the Ultimate Thing dog creature, which uh, is a sizable package. Uh, and you can see a lot of the attachments that will come with it to just make it sort of a gory masterpiece that you can customize to your liking. And as we move on down to the left here, uh, I know that these are actually in store now, right? The the nun and uh, Chucky are mm -hmm. starting to show up, and and uh, the yes. ultimate McCready is part of that last wave of the the Target Fall Geek Out. Yeah, these are all already in stores or just now starting to appear in stores, so you can uh, pick them up around you. I always tell people if they have problems finding at their local Targets or their right. local. Uh, collector stores. There are tons of groups online for collectors helping collectors and you know I dip into them all every now and then and just it's always heartwarming to see how people will help other fans like just going out and getting stuff for them, shipping it you know to the other side of the country or sometimes to the other side of the planet. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, there are a lot of good people in the toy collecting community, and you can find them out there, and they're willing to help. Yep, it's all about that that toy that sense of toy community, uh, and and yeah, it's it's gr it's always great too to see those those NECA sections at Target always getting bigger and bigger and bigger. <laughs> mm -hmm. It is, it is. Um, you know, every relationship with a big box retailer is one that'll always have something where it can be improved, uh, and we are constantly working to make our section better, to make our relationship and the information flow with Target better. Um, and we appreciate all of the comments that people give us online. And people, you know, we don't take it as like excessive bitching and moaning because we want to hear stuff like that. If your Target hasn't stocked NECA in like five months, uh, well, you know, maybe their store manager decided he didn't like Target anymore, or he didn't like NECA anymore, um, and that's something that we can investigate. There are a few Targets that have decided, you know, they just don't want collectibles. It's not for them, um, but for the most part, you know, if you have a complaint about your local store, ping us on social media. You know, you may not think that we're listening, but we are, and we're investigating this stuff all the time to just make sure that we have a better presence in all of the stores. Awesome. So let's move on to the next case here. Uh, as we have, uh, we kind of venture outside of the world of horror and into uh, some, some other music and pop culture stuff. So uh, walk us through what we're seeing up in the, uh, starting in the upper left-hand corner here. Well, for fans over a certain age, these uh, new Ben Cooper kids costume figures here will strike a chord. Uh, you can look at them and you can practically see and feel the sweat just beating under the collar <laughs> uh, from, the, from the vinyl costumes. Uh, these are really fun. They celebrate all of the cheesy Ben Cooper costumes from way back in the day that you'd put on and go out trick-or-treating. Um, the masks will come off. So there are face sculpts underneath. It's not, you know, just faceless kids. But who's under there? I wonder. Hmm. Uh, those are standing next to the clothed John Carver figure. Um, we could have put all of them together, I suppose, but we have these uh, sections dedicated to each format of figure. So they're sort of spread across. Uh, and then next to them, you'll have a first real good look at the Flash Gordon movie action figures. Um, everyone shout together with me, Gordon's alive! <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, I kind of had the feeling these were coming when you did the movie colorway of yeah. the other Flash Gordon figures. These, these, these look fantastic. Yeah, these are entirely screen accurate. And for anyone who's never seen this movie, I highly recommend that you give it a shot. It is just a campy masterpiece. I, I absolutely adore it. And Brian Blessed is just yeah. fantastic. <laughs> yes. So from one form of campy sword and sorcery to, to another, uh, we have Dungeons and Dragons. Yes, uh, this is a line that we do kind of in collaboration with WizKids, since they are, of course, the D&D experts. Um, but this, you can tell the sculptors really put their hearts into some of these when you look at the detail on the armoring. I mean, I think people got a first preview of how detailed some of these they were going to be with War Duke. Oh, yeah. Um, but you can see it, you know, with Strongheart as well, continuing onto his chainmail, and just you know the the originality that they put into some of these sculpts. Um, that beard on Elkhorn, my yeah. goodness. Yeah, it's epic. Dave, it rivals your beard. <laughs> we do have more D and D figures planned, so stay tuned for more news on that front. And now below figures that you know, I think people are, are very excited for and finally getting to see here uh, the the dinosaurs. Yes, uh, we've had the news out for these for a little bit, and people keep asking us, "Are there going to be more figures in the dinosaur line?" And the answer is yes, definitely. Uh, we've teased Fran coming out, but even after that, there will be additional figures. So it's a line we plan on continuing because the response to it has been great. Such such cool designs. I haven't watched the show in years, but I remember it from when it was originally on. Yeah. Uh, you know, just iconic, kind of forgotten designs from the Jim Henson Studios. So really cool to see them uh, come to life here. And then next to that, uh, we have uh, Eddie. The return of of Eddie to the uh, the Ultimate line. Yes, of course. Everyone knows that Randy is the biggest Iron Maiden fan. Um, so for the 40th anniversary, we had to do a remaster of these. Uh, that's 40th anniversary number of the beast uh, set up so that you can recreate the album cover yourself. Awesome. So moving from this case uh, to some gargoyles. There is a fantastic diorama here that you may not even be able to get all into one shot because it's so <laughs> massive. Yeah, massive <laughs> is, a, is an understatement here. Um, we intended to bring this to San Diego, but we did not actually have room in the booth to show it. So it was definitely ready then. Um, we just didn't have a chance to actually commit floor space to it until just now. Uh, I want to give a special thank you to the studio that helped us with this. Well, that actually did the entire thing. I shouldn't say helped us with it. They, uh, that's Euler's Workshop. They uh, crafted this beauty, including all of the lighting from the interior uh, themselves, and it, it is a true masterpiece. It's awesome, and and you know, of course, you know, as as awesome as the diorama is, we have some uh, new reveals here. Uh, hanging out on the diorama. So I guess we should start with uh, Macbeth up here. Yes, so uh, you can spot a couple of n surprises hanging around on the top of the skyscraper here. You'll see Macbeth uh, and then Coldstone joining him. And then down below on the corner, you can even spot Gabriel. Oh yeah, there he is. And all of his blue and orange uh, glory. To the left, there you go. Yes, Gargoyles is a line that has done so well, and there are just a wealth of characters in it that we still have yet to go through. So the line is not ending anytime soon. Awesome. So make space on those, uh, those shelves for these wings. Summer, thank you so much for taking us through the booth, and uh, enjoy the rest of the show. Thank you so much. Thank you for stopping by. Enjoy the rest of the show.